We're gonna talk about adenomyosis and how to know if you have adenomyosis. Um, I'm gonna apologize right up front about the picture. I am not an artist, and this is just gonna be a very uh, crude drawing of your uterus, okay? Um, but hopefully it helps kind of get that information across and helps you understand what adenomyosis is, um, if you might have it, because getting officially diagnosed with adenomyosis can be really frustrating, really, really frustrating. Uh, it can take multiple, multiple doctor's appointments. I, I know women that have gone into the doctor, you know, 12 different times to figure out if they have adenomyosis. Um, seeing, you know, 10 different doctors, all of these things over the course of a decade. So it can be really frustrating. You can try to get a CT or an MRI, but again, sometimes that's not even definitive enough. They're going off of symptoms and everything else too. So. I'm Dr. Beth Westy, women's health and hormone expert, author of the books, The Female Fat Solution and The Female Menopause Solution. These are on Amazon where you can learn more about how to eat for your hormones in your cycle. So there's that. Um, I also am the host of the podcast, The Female Health Solution. You can subscribe there as well as subscribe to my YouTube here. And that way you can stay updated on all the information I have coming out and all of the things um, where I'm trying to educate women on their health and their hormones and different things you can do. So when we talk about this, the overwhelming piece with the denomyosis, we're going to be talking about pain and issues there. How do people get it? Right? It's going to be under that umbrella of estrogen dominance or excess estrogen in your system. How do you know if you have excess estrogen in your system? Dutch test. So you can go below this video, click that link, learn more about a Dutch test. It does measure oh, overall estrogen levels there, but on page three, we go through the entire estrogen pathway here through phase one and two. That's through the liver, right? Phase three is in the gut. So we also talk about gut health and things like that. On page six, there's a gut health marker that gives us an indicator of your microbiome and everything too. But this is something that we really take seriously in terms of understanding your system, how it's functioning and where things are off. So, okay, so let's back up real quick. Talking about adenomyosis, how do I know if I have it? Well, first, what is adenomyosis? Adenomyosis is the endometrial tissue that gets embedded in the muscle of the uterus. So here's a, here's a quick image. Think of your uterus, this is like a balloon, right? Except for the balloon has a really thick core or, you know, outer wall, right? It's, it's, it's not like as thin as a balloon really is. It's your uterus is like a balloon in that it can increase in size throughout the month, right? When the inside fills with you know, the endometrial tissue and, and blood and things like that. That's when you have your period. That's what gets shed out. But the, the uterus around it, it expands, you know, and it can double in size throughout the month. And then when, after you have your period, it's smaller again because it's not storing anything else. So that endometrial tissue is normally like just on the inside here, right? Just inside, you know, it's like if you put some, you know, jello or water in a balloon and then it, you, it all comes out. Okay. That, right. It's in there. It comes out. That's where it should be. Right. Okay. Endometriosis is where that tissue is in other places of the body. It can be on your fallopian tubes, your ovaries, your bladder, bowel tissue, all that stuff. That's endometriosis. Adenomyosis is, speci is very specific and they separate it from just endo, but you can have both, by the way. You can have endometriosis and adenomyosis at the same time. <laughs> so fun. But adenomyosis is that endometrial tissue within the uterine lining, this muscle the muscle here. So that means that even if you don't have that endometrial tissue built up, it's going to be in that lining. Now, why is this significant? Because it is so painful to have it there. Your endometrial tissue is different than the, than the uterine tissue. Your uterus is a muscle, right? It's smooth muscle though. You have different types of muscle in your body. So sometimes this can be helpful to understand just anatomically what's going on, right? You have three different types of muscle total in the body. Skeletal muscle, which most people are familiar with, like that's my bicep, you know, mm, skeletal, mm, boop, right? Cardiac muscle, which is your heart, and then smooth muscle, 
and smooth muscle is muscle that contracts without you physically thinking about it, right? Like I'm gonna move my finger and that skeletal muscle that burp, 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 that the signal goes from my brain and I have full control of doing that, right? Yes. Smooth muscle, like the muscle in your intestines, it doesn't respond, it's automatic, right? It's automatically, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to tell your, your brain doesn't have to tell your intestines or you don't have to be like consciously, okay, I ate a sandwich. Let's move that through my gut like this automatically. No, smooth muscle just does it all like it should. Thank you, smooth muscle. Yes, but it's muscle, right? So you have this other tissue embedded in that muscle. Now, as your uterus grows and fills with blood every month, that muscle is going to stretch. Imagine having scar tissue, right? in there and it's stretching, that's gonna be extremely painful for a good chunk of the month, right? Cause it's not, it, it's not the same stretchy tissue. It's not responding the same. It, it's not gonna feel good, right? And then when you have your period, because the uterus comes down again and changes again very rapidly, right? So your uterus grows in blood throughout several weeks slowly storing it up. And then all of a sudden, within several days, whoosh, it empties it all out. So that's a slow grow. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, quick release per se. And that's all in that muscle. No wonder why it's so painful. So pain really is the number one symptom, extreme pain, constant extreme pain. Like every period is really painful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not, uh, and it's, and it's not something that like just gets better. It slowly gets worse over time. Typically you can also have an actual enlarged uterus. Um, you can have pain in your overall pelvis. You can have pain when you have a very full bladder cause that's going to be pushing on that uterine tissue as well. You can have pain with intercourse. You can have pain with, you know, um, more intense activities in this specific like you can feel that pressure, that heaviness, that pain there. Um, you can have a lot of cramping and everything too. But the other symptoms that go along with it are honestly um, the estrogen dominant symptoms, the excess estrogen symptoms. You can have mood swings, you can have heavier periods, you can have clots, you can have breast tenderness, all those things too. What I find, and this is just clinically, what I find is that a lot of women who have adenomyosis might not even register some of their mood swings or other things because the pain is so severe. Again, because of where this is located and how every single month it will be that painful because of the uterus growing and then coming back down again. And the rapid rate that that happens and it's not allowing it to stretch correctly. So it's very, very painful. That's adenomyosis, but one of the things we look at and in terms of um, helping your system, you know, work better and decrease the pain with is looking at that excess estrogen because the body never does anything without a reason, right? And if you have excess estrogen, we want to look at why that is and then how we can help your body process that out. Again, looking at a Dutch test. So if you have not had a Dutch test, go in the show notes, get a Dutch test. It gets sent right to your house. You take the test, send it into the lab. We go over your results and then talk about how we're going to help you get your body to function better. This does not happen overnight. This does not happen overnight. Um, it can take six months. It can take a year. But I promise you that amount of time feels short in comparison with the years and years and years or decades even that your body has been in a lot of pain because of something like adenomyosis. So. That's what I got for you guys today. Um, please let me know if you have any other questions. Again, you can leave questions below um, or you can reach out to me privately if you're not comfortable leaving a question in the comments. Otherwise, getting a Dutch test really is the next best step because we can target a lot of those hormonal imbalances and just get you functioning better so you feel better. All right, I will see you later. Have a great rest of your day.